the f was the purpose of that? I pointed to the right for you to go I know, to the right. but I don't want you to point to the right. Go to the f***ing right. Why would I go to the right? I want to get behind you so why I can film you. Why do you want to be behind me? So why You're I can film you. You're supposed to guide, you kid. If I'm in front of you, I don't get any footage of you. No, you just came out. You just sat there and tried to come up with some bullshit the last second. That was horrible. There's no footage of you. But I, I got one camera on me. <laughs> you're you're, you're so ridiculous. Listen, listen. That's what I think about your listen. Kick rocks. <laughs>
Brandy H. Brandy, Brandy with H? an I. Yeah, well, that's the way you're supposed to spell it. It's supposed to be with a Y. That's what Cousin Brandy spelled. <clears throat> brandy with a Y. Oh, you're gonna get some brandies upset. The that, that, I'm telling brandy. you, the whole the whole I and Y thing is fighting words between brandies. Well, let me tell you something, Brandy. It's with an H or with a damn Y, <laughs> not an I. Brandy says, uh, "Hey, <laughs> definitely an awesome channel. Love the content, and not only that, Have you been but drinking? no, completely budget recommended. Every time somebody runs into Brandy and they're talking about, mm -hmm. hey, I'm looking at this budget bike. I'm looking at this budget bike. What do you think about this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, Brandy goes, hey, why don't you uh, go to this whole Wolfsick videos and uh, give them some love and check go. out their opinions. They're very scientific. Oh, Brandy with a Y H. Uh, appreciate the uh, bicycle with an I, man. You've been drinking it's with a Y. We got." Our boy Honed Aggressor. He's back for more. He's been on the board before. And 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 it's been confirmed. Honed aggressor confirmed. basically means it's an aggressor that's the <laughs> cat's <laughs> tuned in mother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a lump of cock right there. Old Honed Aggressor uh sent us a little something something in the mail time. And we just opened it. Guys, next week, uh that's gonna be next Friday's video, mail time with the Ledge X1 test track. Is that so confirmed? make sure you guys are watching. Next on the Bice Cup of Coffee board, we've got old West Graves. I don't know what the hell you're on. I'm drinking coffee. What are you That's that sure? Mexican. <laughs> Wes Graves, thank you so much for the five cups of coffee. And Wes Graves also said that, uh, hey, I've definitely bought two or three things because of you guys reviewing them. Well, thank you. Yeah, very yeah, cool, man. Good. And that's what we're here for. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Anthony. What's the difference in that and anyone else's? Mayolo. 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 Is it that easy, Anthony? Mayolo. Anthony Mayolo. Mayolo. Mm -hmm. Homeboy says, hey, you guys are really making me realize that I don't have to have a $1,500 bike to enjoy mountain biking. He's got a GT Aggressor Pro, I guess, and he's throwing money into it. Now, the only thing I can say to that, Anthony, that's awesome. That's what we're here for. That's what the channel is all about. But be careful, because you might just rack up $1,500 in parts on your GT Aggressor Pro. You can. We, we got up to about 1100 at yeah. one point. Yeah, we got it up there. Appreciate the comment. That's pretty cool. And man, thank you so much for the five cups of coffee. Oh, Christopher Olguin, three cups of coffee. We're going to show you a little bit of love, too. Christopher says, hey, I love the content, guys. I love the channel. I'm a fan. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Christopher Olguin, thank you so much. All right, so we're going to be talking about the Mongoose ledge x1 and the mongoose xr pro now the reason both of these bikes are going to be going head to head and some people go well this one's got all this and that one's a 29er and why are you guys head to heading them why are we head to heading them well because basically one is is considered a replacement for the other now i know there's an x2 but but the x2 isn't till now so when it first came out this is the x1 and it sort of replaced the XR Pro, and the XR Pro they made a quick push to sell the last ones. I think at the mm -hmm. end, that's what and we then got. they had the uh, the Ledge X1 come out. Regardless of why, the point is the same price point. Yeah, so we thought before we start to upgrade these bikes, and uh, next week's gonna be the time trial on the Ledge X1. But before we start throwing a bunch of parts and everything, I and mean, we wanted to get them side by side in stock form, show you guys some B-roll footage of both of them, and which one at the end of the video I guess we think is better. Yeah. You mentioned both the same exact price, three hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Now both of these bikes, just by looking at them, regardless if it's just pictures or if I seen them in person, I'm automatically looking at the, um, the XR Pro and not thinking that it's going to be that that expensive. I'm thinking that's oh, like so a two hundred fifty dollar XR... bike. Really? It looks a little cheaper to me. Huh? Why would you think that? I'm curious. Why would you think that? Uh, number one, the internal routing factor. Okay. The XR Pro is kind of all over the place. You've got your front derailleur uh, cable and housing. Mm -hmm. You've got your rear derailleur. You've got your rear brake. And then, you know, the front brake doesn't really count. But it's just kind of real busy. It looks like the cheaper of the two. If you're going to talk about this being a $398 bike versus that, the $398, yeah. then what you need to start calling this is basically a $529 bike. Yeah. Because you're going to have to get a rear wheel for this. And right now, have that's to. not fun. Yeah. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about the group set and the wheel set. The XR Pro's got both front and rear quick release, and it's a free hub. I yes, mean, like you're saying, different. you're going to save money. If you want to get uh, something cheap like a LT woo, group set, and you want to buy it and you slap it on that You could put the thing, AX11 on that bike. Uh-huh. You could do and that. And a one-buy 
and that's about $150 worth or $160 worth to do a one by and an AX11. And then that bike right there it starts, it's gonna get, have starts to get set. a little serious. But now. then, on the other hand, you go to upgrade the group set on the ledge, and you don't have that ability unless you're going to be doing a free wheel. So say you wanted to spend extra money on a rear wheel. You have to start off with it at the minimum a hundred hundred twenty dollars for a rear wheel. For a rear minimum. wheel, twenty seven five with a quick release and a free hub, right around that area. And then you will you will save money because it's radio one by. If you want to go with a square taper one by. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just that savings there. So, does that equal you out? You could start off with that, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Before we jump on to the next subject, I also want to talk about the groups on this thing. Although it is a free wheel, it does have a clutch. And that was pretty wow. huge. you remember back in the day when we bought the boundary, or when we bought the TAF, we were so freaking excited because it was a big box store bike that said it had a clutch. And that's pretty uh -huh. huge. You know what I mean? Now, this clutch sucks, and most of them do, and you can't shift the damn things, but this is a Pro Rush 7 speed with a clutch. I mean, you guys see me drop say, this. This isn't as beat up as I thought it would be. No, it's not as beat up. This little uh, chain basher guard here, or chain guide guard, mm -hmm. it's not as beat up as you would think. And I just got done riding the crap out of this thing down the cat's meow. Yeah. Uh, so it's it, it does work, and it does keep a pretty good amount of attention on there. Of course, you're not going to be in first gear going down a mountain, mm -hmm. but it is neat to say, hey, I just got a bike. It's a mountain bike, full suspension. $400 and it has a clutch group set or it's got a clutch derailleur. That, that's pretty cool. But let's go ahead and talk about the tires, right? Everybody makes a big deal about tires and what you get. And I am a fat tire loving man. I love a 2.8 inch, a 2.6 inch. And the Mongoose has got the Compass 2.6 inch tires on it. And the tread's kind of crappy and they're pretty weak tires whenever you get your first and second ride out of them but i do like the width of them and we know that the frame can withstand a 2.6 at least on the rear right and the fork we can always change your fork out but the xr pro has a 2.1 inch tire and 2.1 it's a 2.1 and remember the ledge is a 27.5 and the um, xr pro is a 29er they just seem like a traditional mountain bike tread you know i i do like the fat tire and to me it just makes me feel more comfortable behind the wheel the wheel yeah, the steering wheel. Let's talk about the weight. Most of the time, 29ers weigh heavier, right? And now these are both full suspension, so we're looking at least real close up to the 40 pound weight uh, weight mark. And the XR Pro weighs 38.84 pounds, and the Ledge X1 is 40.01. So you got a couple pounds difference. Yeah. Now roughly. one thing I want to check: the pivot points. That's what Whatever people call it's them. That's, okay. Yeah. The one on the XR Pro, magnet tested it. Is it aluminum? Doesn't stick. You think this is aluminum or, or steel? It's aluminum. Yeah, it's yeah. aluminum. Okay, see, I was trying to think of where the weight is, and it can't be in the forks. I think both bars and both stems on both of these bikes is aluminum. Well, the, the, that's steel. You think it's going to be the uh, the wheel set? Look, that's steel. Is that steel? Holy crap! The XR Pro is aluminum. Yeah. That's where the weight is. I did not know that. You didn't check it originally? Uh uh. The wheels are steel on the Ledge X1. Holy crap. So that's where a lot of that weight is. I'm sure, I mean, that and the fork and everything else, but I mean, holy crap. So with the Ledge X1 is a heavier bike. All right, so the next thing I want to bring up, and you, I know your stance on this, but everybody else, and we kind of talked about it a while back in one of the videos, is the tapered head tube, mm -hmm. you know? The XR Pro, and I think that's one of the reasons when I look at the XR Pro, I go, eh, you know, big box store bike, and I look at this one and go, oh, not a big box store bike because of the geometry and the head tube. The Ledge X1 well, is a tapered. It's a, dead giveaway it's a tapered head tube, and the XR uh, Pros is isn't. It's, you know, it's a, a yeah, and, and and I understand that tapered is uh, gives you a little. Here's the problem: tapered is not. There's nothing good about tapered unless you plan on spending money. Because when it comes down to yeah, it, yeah. if it's, you're not gonna, if you're not going over two hundred dollars, you don't want tapered. Because if you go tapered, there's only a couple selections under two hundred dollars. Where if it's a, if it's a straight steer or a straight head tube, then you can go under two hundred on just about everything. Yeah, you can go you know, down I mean, in the one twenties, but that is difficult. And not only that, but if you're going to get a tapered fork, chances are you're going to get a damn tapered fork that's got a fifteen millimeter through axle. Yeah, and that's then a big thing there's too. another out goes for then, then you might as well get a whole so, wheel set. So you kind of have an argument with the XR Pro and it being a, a cheaper if avenue. If you're going to be on go. a budget, if you're going to be on a budget, and if not, if you're just looking to upgrade this thing, which we're going to get to, then I mean, you know, that right there, you might go, wow, that's a big, you know, that's a plus. Yeah. I want to talk about the riding of them. Okay, okay yeah. so the 27.5, the standover on the Mongoose Ledge X1 is great. It's a great standover. Uh, the standover height on this one here is a little clouded. 
and it gets a little intense because that top tube is so uh comes so abrupt quickly, you know yeah. it, it comes up quickly well the, so does this one once you get past this. yeah the mongoose ledge x1 does as well but it's got like but, kind of a cool step through yeah. design um but something that bothers me with the um, xr pro and we're going to figure out when we put those forks in that new shock on it and that's going to be coming up here pretty soon uh it's going to be the standover and the way it feels in the cockpit because you remember when i was talking about how small it felt it mm. felt like i was up in the air but i was in a small area because the bars aren't too big it just felt weird, and, and not necessarily weird in a bad way. It's just the 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 cockpit is so small. The Ledge X1, I'm five five. It fits me really well. Like I was able to really ride the crap out of that thing when we did the uh, test track. It feels really good to me, and maybe part of that is to do with the little short fifty or forty millimeter stem and the oversized bars that it's got, as opposed to the ninety millimeter stem with the uh, you know seven twenty bars. I think those ones over there are 750s and 720s. Makes a little bit of a difference. Is that what it is, 720s? Oh, yeah, 720s on this one. I think those are 750s with the Mongoose oversized bars. The Ledge X1, as far as feel, definitely wins it for me. The internal routing, and we kind of hit on that in the beginning as far as like what the bike looks like, as far as, hey, in my opinion, you know, that's what I look for. Is like, is it worth that much? Or, you know, what all does it come with and doesn't? The Ledge X1's got everything internally routed. You know, and it, can, it is set up to have an internal dropper post, which is pretty cool. And honestly, I think internal dropper posts are a little overrated. I think they're great because they're clean, but I've only had one. And it's not because it's a budget one. So don't start hating, but the Axum DP that we got sitting over there, it's got an internal dropper post. And to work on that damn thing is so freaking difficult. You know, just putting it together. And everybody says the same damn thing. And I doubt it just because it's an Axum DP. We're going to get one of those one. that have the handle underneath the seat. Just forget all the extra crap. I don't know. But uh, the Ledge X1 is all internally routed. And it also has an internal routing for the dropper, which is great. The XR Pro doesn't have any internal routing or one for an internal dropper post, you know? Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of weird. I could have sworn it had internal routing for something, but it doesn't. All I can say is the wolf tick ability, the upgrade ability, the, hey, buying this thing and throwing money out, like you said, I agree with you. The Ledge X1, I'm wanting to upgrade the crap out of that bike. This one here, it's kind of nice because it's kind of like you said, and we're not even meaning to do it. It's kind of the bike that you ride for a little bit, and you start upgrading slowly. And, and that's what we're going to be doing to it. It's going to be a budget upgrade. It's gonna be, yeah. have, we have the Hamalo, Hamalo, Hamalo. fork for it, and we have the, uh, what's the, DNM rear shot for it. And they're both really, yeah. they're both inexpensive. That puppy right there is going to be going on the XR Pro here pretty soon. Okay, so guys in the comments, let us know, do you have either of these bikes, and do you agree with, easeability of owning the XR Pro. I think the big plus on the XR Pro is it has a free hub. And that's huge. That's the number people. one That's the thing. number one thing. Now, the number one thing on the X1 is the geometry, I would say. Would you agree? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's reluctantly. I would say before geometry, the tapered head tube that most people would probably like more. Yeah, and uh, it definitely feels maybe a little bit more sporty. It feels more like a sports car than the uh, XR Pro. I think it's the mixture of the geometry and the tapered head tube. Yeah, it's got, the bike's got such a good look to it. My favorite bike out of these two is the Ledge X1. Okay, well. What about I, you? Well, I don't have a favorite out of these two. I like e-bikes. Um, but I would say that... I would I would favor the XR Pro because of the history. It has been the the king of big box bikes for a while, as far as uh, you know what you get for the money. Mm -hmm. And um, it had sort of a mystique about it for the longest time, and getting a hold of one was kind of fun. And uh, and I can't wait to see how it looks and reacts to the upgrades we make on it. I, I think both. I, I think they both have their place. There's nothing wrong with the ledge. I like the ledge. What about if we're keeping it stopped for a while? If we're keeping it stopped for a while, XR Pro by a mile, as far as I'm concerned. Why? Because for one, the fork. Do you not remember whistling Dixie up here oh, doing yeah. squeakums? Yeah. You you couldn't. You tried to spit on it to get rid of it. Yeah, because and it was just so wait wild. till you guys see next week's time trial video. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. fork. So mm -hmm. the fork is horrible. This it's fork bad. is it's really, an element really mongoose bad. branded fork. And this one back here is the Suntour XCT28. It, it's and not a great fork, but it's a lot better than that. It's 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 a coil fork, but it's got preload. It's got some knowledge yeah, on there, so you something. can actually adjust you can something. Actually, do a few things to it. And it Can't you lock it out, dude? No, oh. it, it wasn't terrible on the trails. So that is an upside, I guess, to that one. If you're going to keep it and for just ride it for a while. But when it comes down to it, we get we get down to the real truth of things. 
we're riding the same kind of trails. We're riding the, the, the blue square trails or whatever, you know, with, with mild little downhill sections. Either bike's fine. Climbs and climbs, some people say that the, the you know, steeper head tube's better for climbing. I You say that you don't mind either way. You don't I think love, this... I love... I love 29ers for climbing. It feels way Which is me. weird to me. I, I love 29ers for climbing. And 27.5 is so much more maneuverable. And I would rather take a 27.5 on the Lizard Trail and take a uh, you know a 29er on the Chickalaw Loop and climbing uphill. All right, guys. Well, that was a comparison and our opinions on the Ledge X1 and the uh, Let's XR know what Pro. You guys think. Yeah, I really want to know what you guys think. I'm curious. Uh, even if you guys don't own these bikes, or if you own just one of them and not the other, uh, get, you know, give us a little bit of upsides. Uh, what are your three big things as to which one's better? You know, that's what I want to know. Three number ones as far as what bike. I'm old, fat, tired, sweating, and I'm ready to call it a night. So let's end this. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you watching Wolf Dick videos as always. Um, as you have seen down below, we've got some merchandise. You want a little Tank Top Tuesday or you want a little uh, OG Wolf Dick video shirt? Check out that link below. Represent the nation, please. And also, all the uh, coffee sports, thank you guys so much for doing what you guys do and helping us obtain stuff like this. And uh, we will see you on the next video.